100 for 100, the podcast where we take 100 films. I do believe every new movie goer should watch ranked from 100 all the way up to number one. And I also accompany it with a 100 word review. And we're moving on, man. This is the fourth, the fourth one, man. So it's number 97 on our list. It's also the 4th of January. If you're listening to this, the day it goes up, uh, we're doing this for the first 100 days of 2020, man. So by, I don't know, uh, fucking April, mid-April, somewhere, early April, <laughs> you'll have a whole bunch of podcasts sit down and listen to a whole bunch of short podcasts to listen to so you can listen to my rambly ass talk about the 100 films that moviegoers need to watch. So let's get into number 97. Number 97 is um, we're going back to the 80s. So far, the uh, the first four days, three of the movies have come from the 80s, I've noticed. This one's 1989. It's directed by Phil Alden Robinson, a person whose work I'm not very familiar with. But he did do a movie called Field of Dreams. Field of Dreams is an amazing movie, by the way. Amazing. Probably should have been higher on this list if you ask me, even though I'm the one who made it. <laughs> so let's talk about the, let me give out the 100-word review for Field of Dreams. <clears throat> pound for pound, I consider Field of Dreams to be one of the best father-son films ever made. It's also a film about faith in various ways, faith of belief in self, and learning to place faith in loved ones. The film also touches on internal strength, knowing when to preserve uh, when to persevere through adversity and setbacks. As with other films in Kevin Costner's oeuvre, Field of Dreams also serves as a love letter to America's greatest pastime, baseball. Moving performances from James Earl Jones and Burt Lancaster and a subdued Ray Liotta are bolstered by a touching score from James Horner of Star Trek fame. Man, Field of Dreams is, whew, Field of Dreams is that shit. This is the best way to put it. I love this movie. I'm fortunate enough, if you want to call it that, I have to work on Saturdays, every Saturday. My, this is how my schedule lands. I got work on Saturdays. But a lot of Saturdays, um, I don't remember what channel or what uh, who owns it, but Field of Dreams comes on a lot on good old cable television, and I try to catch it every single time it is on. All right? One man's belief in his faith as the easiest way to break this movie down. Um James Earl Jones, I think, shines in this movie. Like, Kevin Costner is good. He's real good. But, damn it, I think James Earl Jones steals every scene that they're in together. Every scene. Uh, Ray Liotta isn't a complete psychopath, <laughs> which is refreshing for once, although he's still got the, the crazy eyes when you see him from time to time in that movie. Um, everything with uh, Burt Lancaster's Archibald Moonlight Graham is wonderful as well. I, I like the fact that only those who believed could actually – see the baseball diamond it's 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 all about the manifestation of that faith right uh you know when they go to pick up archibald moonlight graham you know and they they go to that baseball game i forgot what teams are playing but that scoreboard starts flickering man i thought that was creepy as shit when i was a kid <laughs> uh my favorite scene in this whole shebang of bang is uh is moonlight graham uh, coming to help ray's daughter uh, after she's fallen, I think she's uh, she's choking on that hot dog she's eating because of uh, because of uh, Kevin Costner's dick brother in law in that movie, um, and he knows the sacrifice he has to make. He had a dream; his dream was to play with the big boys, and he got to play one game with the big boys, but he knew he had to go back to being a doctor. And he makes that step over the first base foul line, man, and you see that magical transformation out of the baseball uniform into uh, into the outfit that he was previously wearing, that old man Burt Lancaster outfit. It's probably some tweed Robert Langdon shit with the patches on the elbows and the uh, and the Jolly Fat Man hat. Um, goes over there and, and helps out the daughter, man, that, that when he stops at the, at the first baseline, like part of me's like, don't do it, man. Don't do it. Even though there's a kid choking. Uh, but then as soon as he takes that step, I'm like, oh man, he made the right choice. Uh, that's gotta be, that's, that's the, the scene for me right there. And if not that, then obviously the pitch and catch scene at the very end. Um, there's, you know, it stills back to a time in America where, where the best way a, a father bonded with his son is just by, you know, talking, 
while you're just doing some pitching and catching of the baseball. It harkens back to that time. Um, I, I've said many and many a times that I think Field of Dreams is the best father-son film made. I will stick by that until the day I die, until they come out with, I don't know, Field of Dreams 2, Don't Stop Believing. Uh, but number 97 on the list, Field of Dreams. <laughs> 